Okay, first things first, we need to establish an objective reality. De Nouveau DRM is a scourge on gaming. For those that aren't aware, DRM, also known as Digital Rights Management, is a software subgroup that pertains to control of game sales and enforcement of ownership. DRM itself has an incredibly long and very complicated history. The technical aspects of this are kind of beyond the scope of the video for today, but summarizing some of the more important parts, DRM is an evolution of software anti-tamper efforts that dates back as far as the 1980s. Mostly popularized as a response to rising video and music theft, DRM went through phases that saw everything from self-destruct features to complete reliance on physical disks, but more recently, the incorporation of DRM has focused on an industry giant by the name DeNuvo. DeNuvo was originally released in 2014, and since that time has been used to strengthen the anti-tamper measures of more than 150 different video games. Many of these are some of the most popular titles in all of gaming, and over the course of its seven-year-ish history, it is engaged in a tug-of-war, if you will, kind of, against hackers who attempt to crack the software and disable it. The idea for DRM is generally pretty simple. If you can force people to play or buy a legitimate version of the game, and you curb the spread of falsified copies, you will make much more money. De Nouveau sells this promise to gaming developers all over the world, and today I want to make a very clear argument that the games you buy, the legitimate copies, are objectively worse products than those that you get from a piracy website. Effectively, pirated games are superior copies, inexorably, undeniably, and categorically. Now, I should add at this point in the video that piracy comes with very distinct risks, because for one, it's flat out illegal. Don't do it. I am not encouraging an illegal act right here. I am saying do not engage in that practice. But it's important for the gaming industry to simultaneously understand that any game which incorporates De Nouveau is an objectively worse product, period. There are also risks of security and infiltration. Torrenting games can come with a whole lot of other additional programs and circumvents the established security of buying the title from the actual developers or the publisher, but that's a topic for a different day. Bottom line, don't pirate games. I don't want to get banned from this platform for encouraging illegal activities. But those pirated games and copies that you don't buy, or don't get, I'm sorry, are without question, <laughs> oh, I got dangerously close, where they might delete me for encouraging piracy. I'm not doing that. Don't pirate games. Those pirated copies, however, are without question a better copy to own for most existing titles. So finally, without further ado, let's talk about why that is. The first and most widely known reason that most people are probably already aware of is that De Nouveau slows down performance. Background visuals right now here are benchmarks that come courtesy of Overlord Gaming, so definitely show them some support over on their YouTube channel. De Nouveau downgrades loading times, minimum, maximum, and average FPS, as well as numerous other functions with measurable percentage discrepancies, often double-digit percentage discrepancies. There are numerous examples, some more or less severe, making this a variable issue, kind of, but almost without fail, De Nouveau downgrades game performance by a measurable and noticeable amount. Prey, Metro Exodus, Detroit Become Human, Conan Exiles, Hitman, Mad Max, Sniper Ghost Warrior, you get the point. It's a really long list. And in almost every single instance, you will receive lower performance benchmarks because of De Nouveau, as well as worse loading times and bloated file size. This also ignores the issue where your CPU is actually reading and writing a lot more often, which can, I guess, lead to solid state drives getting destroyed much quicker, which De Nouveau technically denies as a claim, and they say that's not actually happening. But at this point in time, with all of the other issues, it's worth making a note of. That's probably the most common complaint that I or anyone else will ever see, and it's already a fairly decisive indication that pirated copies are objectively superior, but there's quite a bit more to go over still, so let's get to that. The next thing to be aware of is the fact that De Nouveau games are significantly more likely to break, which means they constitute another link in the chain between player and product, as if there weren't enough of those already, which has recently been proven as extremely weak. It turns out that hardware advances have begun impacting De Nouveau in adverse ways. Intel, with its new Alder Lake CPUs, managed to break the functionality for 32 De Nouveau protected games, and as of right now, as far as I know, there is no solution. From what I could discover, the issue is rather complicated, but can be summarized as a false positive where De Nouveau believes the user is running a virtual machine. This gets caused by a combination of small and large cores in the CPU, which is new hardware technology, I guess, but tricks the De Nouveau software, inadvertently, I might add, into believing that the user is doing something unacceptable, thereby breaking the functionality of 32 different games that use the software. 
That's bad. Simply by upgrading hardware or using new electronic advancements, you might lose access to Denuvo protected games because the software is so restrictive in its attempts to deny you any freedom, it interprets new hardware as a breach in protocol. That kind of problem could very well become more and more common in the future, but it simply does not exist with a pirated copy. Yet another reason why legitimate copies of games play second fiddle to those with cracked features. How about another one? Over the weekend of July 14th, 2021, a large number of games became unplayable. The exact number is unknown, but reports indicate that it was a majority of all titles that contained Denuvo DRM. At first, no one really knew why, but it was later discovered that a specific integral domain name called CodeFusion Technology, CodeFusion.technology, had been allowed to expire, which somehow broke the entire functionality of Denuvo's software and made various games completely unplayable. The Code Fusion domain name had lapsed, gone into a grace period, I believe, and then lapsed completely, which shut down access for most of the games utilizing this horrid piece of software and technology. And though the domain has since been renewed at this point in time, it's been renewed for just one year, which means we very well might have to contend with this type of issue again in the future, which is idiotic and should never be the case. As I stated previously, Denuvo exists as yet another weak link in the chain between player and product, which is now proven to not only deny access on numerous different occasions, but also degrade the actual performance when you can get access to the game. All of this begins to construct a fairly undeniable picture that Denuvo is bad in every single aspect of the word for actual players. But what about the logical incentive where players want to get into games when it releases, not months later? Yes, that is probably the single best motivational factor to buy an inferior product from the actual publisher, because waiting 60, 75, or even 90 days to finally get the game that you, you have been waiting for, or you've been anticipating it post-release, when the legitimate copies do typically function with Denuvo, even if they are worse and less reliable, well, waiting that long is not really appealing. Good news, you don't have to. Denuvo DRM went from being a scourge on the world of gaming with successful anti-tamper measures to a complete fucking joke within the span of like, I don't know, maybe a year. Back in 2016, a hacker by the name of Voxy, I think, succeeded in cracking the game Doom two months after release, and this sent shockwaves through the online gaming community. A group called CPY, also known as Conspiracy, announced soon after that it had completely bypassed Denuvo's anti-tamper protocols, and though the company rebuilt its software very quickly after this, they entered into a series of battles with Conspiracy over the next couple of years, where every single time a major title was released containing their software, it was attacked and dissected by Conspiracy in an effort to destroy Denuvo's industry dominance. In July of 2018, I think it was, Denuvo filed a lawsuit against Voxy, which resulted in his website, called Revolt, being taken down, and Voxy was arrested by Belgian authorities soon after that. But the damage he had caused could not be undone, and Pandora's box was effectively opened. For a while, there was this sort of tug of war between Denuvo and the hacking community, but something changed around 2021 and 2022, where Denuvo games began to get cracked within hours after their release. Even better, with a rise of early access or pre-order bonuses, some games were being cracked before they even publicly launched, such as Hitman 2, that's a great example, which was cracked three days before its actual public release. Gamers don't really need to wait anymore. Single-player titles that come laced with Denuvo anti-tamper technology are being broken down and regurgitated onto the torrent websites in the time it takes you to get home from work for one day, meaning that the number one incentive and purpose that the software was meant to fulfill is rendered null and void. What's even better is that companies have begun to strip Denuvo out of their products post-launch. There is a growing list of games where the anti-tamper software has been removed, and as expected, the performance drastically improves. It's worth noting that some of these issues run beyond simple FPS and loading time discrepancies, such as a stuttering issue for Resident Evil Village, which was fixed when Denuvo got disabled, but then again, they also claim that it wasn't their software, it was Capcom's, so it's a whole big thing where Denuvo just tries to obfuscate responsibility for everything that goes wrong. Just keep that in mind. Developers were, and are, starting to take notice of this, however, that a bloated piece of software infects their games, which bogs down almost every aspect of their functionality, and doesn't even prevent a crack from being made for a few hours on launch day. It might not be worth paying for or cursing their community with. Fun fact, as the DRM portion of their business crumbles, Denuvo has made a pivot to releasing anti-cheat software as well. As one might imagine, it's been equally as pathetic as developers begin to strip that out of their games in tandem. Something like Doom Eternal comes to mind, where Denuvo anti-cheat existed for like 
what, a week or less before id Software agreed to take it out of the game, like, completely, because it sucked so badly and players hated it so much. Speaking of Doom Eternal, it also turned out that in 2020, at least one, I heard reports of two more, but those remain unconfirmed, at least one antivirus application was detecting Denuvo as malware, likely due to its kernel-level access to the machine. Denuvo itself, like any DRM, honestly, winds up as a bit of a paradox. The idea is to prevent piracy and spike sales, but to do this, they degrade the game quality and performance for actual users. This, in turn, incentivizes piracy and leads to an increase in opposition. What starts as a simple idea to protect their product from illegal downloads winds up as a piece of software that simply hurts all the people who buy the game legitimately, which ultimately means that people they're tr the people they're trying to stop have better versions of their game than the people that, that buy what they're supposed to buy. That's an unsustainable pattern and obviously leads right to where we are right now. De Nouveau is dying, being removed from games and falling by the wayside, as any DRM would or will, because the entire premise is a self-defeating cycle. Games are often considered to be artwork, and tying their functionality to third-party DRM software has a limiting effect on the accessibility of that artwork, which expands beyond the scope of preventing piracy into a denial for legitimate customers on more than one occasion, while their high seas roaming brethren have unfettered and superior access to an objectively superior product. Ultimately, pirated game copies are categorically superior in multiple separate metrics to the legitimate ones when those legitimate copies utilize de novo. And that fact is unlikely to ever change. But that's it. If you want to support their links down below, primarily Odyssey, which is a YouTube platform alternative. Also Locals, $5 a month to support the channel if you want to subscribe over there. Plus another gaming YouTuber to check out, merchandise, social media, etc, etc. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching and have a nice night.